morning, somebody. Good morning. Good morning. If you know Jesus is real, somebody give God praise in the house today. If you're happy to be alive today, somebody give God praise today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's just a blessing just to be back in the sanctuary. Yes. 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 I know all of us are not here right now. You know, we want to try to make sure that everything is good. We try to make sure that we take proper precautions, amen, because we, at, when we trust in God, at the same time, we have to make sure that we use godly wisdom. And so, but it's a blessing to be here, and we look forward to seeing you soon, praise the Lord. There's a couple people in the house that I want to acknowledge today. First of all, let's thank God for our choir fire. Uh, FIA, who's in the building. Let's thank God for them. You're FIA, but sometimes I forget I call you fires. But my, my bad, because you're on fire for the Lord. Amen. We thank God also for our new minister of music. Let's praise God for Mr. Zephyro Gaskin. Amen. We also thank God as we have a special appearance today. Yes. Let's praise God for our former minister of music, Mr. Zach Stevens. <laughs> we also thank God for brother, Mr. Antonio Brown. Let's thank God for him. Yes. Praise the Lord. We thank God for all of you today, uh, and we look forward to the day when we can truly all be together in person for worship. Anything that you're concerned about, anything that you worry about, you don't have to carry your burdens, you don't have to be afraid, you don't have to worry. Just give it over to God. God is a burden bearer, but God will take care of anything that would try to trouble his children. Amen? Amen. Amen. At this time, we will have our invocation with Christ's servant minister, Roxanne Griffin. Let's praise God for her. Amen. We will now be blessed with a musical selection by our choir FIA. In the name of Jesus, we have the victory. Amen.
Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you this morning that we have the victory in you. Father God, your people are in need of a miracle today. They may be at home. They may be recovering in the rehabilitation centers. They may be even watching us live at this moment, worshiping with us. But God, we know that nothing is too hard for you. So God, we ask right now that you touch your people today. Bring about your power. Bring about your healing. Lord, we have victory over any illness. We have the victory over any disease. We have the victory over any trouble. Lord, we thank you for the victory in advance. For you, Lord, are almighty and all-powerful. We thank you for the healing in the body, mind, spirit, and the soul. And in all things and at all times, we truly will be worshipers of you. We will be worshipers of you in the way that we live, the example that we give to others, and we will worship you with the praise that comes off of our lips. Lord, we praise you. We love you. We thank you. And always we give you all honor, glory, and praise that you deserve. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. At this time, we will have our announcements with Sister Kim Smith. Praise the Lord. Good morning, Grace, and it is indeed a pleasure to be back in the house of the Lord. I've been looking forward to this day. As you know, our, our entire church's return to worship service has been delayed. Um, once a new date has been set for return to Grace Day, all will be notified. You can continue to enjoy service on Facebook, YouTube, and Zoom. The Women of Grace invite you to Morning Glory with Grace, the virtual answer to the annual Women's Day Breakfast. This online event will be held on next Saturday, September 25th at 9 a.m. A flyer has been sent to everyone at Grace. Please make sure you share it with your family and friends. If you did not get one, please contact Joyce Gallier. She has the email list. Or you can contact Shauna Marie, Susie Hill, or Bernadette Jones. The suggested donation is $25. You can bring your donation to the church on Tuesdays and Saturdays leading up to the event. Or you can mail it into the church or use Bill Pay or the Cash App. Just make sure you list on your check or Bill Pay that it's for Morning Glory with Grace. The 2021 Women's Day Committee would like for the Women of Grace to send pictures of yourself to be included in the Women's Day Collage that will be featured in, on our Women's Day service. Remember, our colors are white and purple. Please send your pictures to either Kim Smith or Joyce Gallier by next Sunday. That is September 26th. Next Sunday will be the Ushers Recognition Sunday. This will be a time to recognize the Ushers of Grace and their service to our church. The Ushers ask that for your, ask for your support by making a contribution or donation via your offering envelopes and checking the usher block on the back of your envelope. Our new church secretary, Ms. Jasmine Royal, would like to remind us that the new church office hours are as follows. Tuesdays and Thursdays between the hours of 10 a.m. and 3 
p.m. and Fridays from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Your generous and faithful giving continues to be a blessing and is greatly appreciated. You can mail in your tithes and offering to Grace United Methodist Church, 7101 North 20th Street, Philadelphia, PA, 19138. Or you can bring your tithes and offering to the church office mail slot on Tuesdays and Saturdays between the hours of 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. Or you can use bill pay or the cash app. If you're using the cash app, download to your phone and give to dollar sign Grace is the place. Continue prayers for our Grace family who have recently lost loved ones. Let us also keep in our thoughts and prayers members and friends of Grace who are on our sick and recovering list. Special prayers for Barry and Joyce Gallard, Reverend Julia Bright, Juanita Rutland, Gladys Mumford, Mary Chisholm, Mr. and Mrs. Hollis, Chantel Branch, Dolores Smith, Josephine Morris, and Angela Reese, as well as Mrs. Lawton's son. Be sensible and responsible when out and about. COVID-19's D variant is with us and has been causing havoc, especially for the unvaccinated. Your best defense is to get your vaccine if you are able and have not yet done so, and to remember to wear your mask. You have the power to save your life and those around you by doing those two things. To everyone, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful and blessed week. Amen. We will now be blessed with a musical selection by FIA, which is, I'm looking for a miracle.
every day you should expect a miracle from the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I expect a miracle from God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. For truly, <laughs> the Lord is worthy to be praised. At all times. You have to have continual praise in your mouth. Let us pray, Father. I ask that the Spirit of the living God fall afresh. I ask, Lord, that you use me as a willing vessel, Lord, to strengthen somebody today, to encourage somebody today, to remind somebody today of your love, your grace, and your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for you are an amazing God. Yes. And as the choir just sang about, we continue to expect miracles and expect great things from you. Lord, we love you and praise you always, at all times. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen. message today to someone is God will help you to weather the storm. Yeah. Recently we've had several storms. You see the alerts on the news and you get the text messages on your phone to remind you to take shelter in your basement, get your emergency kit together. The peanut butter and the, the jerky. Sometimes the jerky may not be there because you might have, if you're like me, you might have ate it, but. You prepare as best as you can for the storm. And sometimes storms are very disruptive. Sometimes flooding occurs. And sometimes the water rises higher than anticipated. In 40 some years here in Philadelphia, I've never seen the area of, especially the many areas, but the area around 676 with the water up to the bypasses and overpasses. It's incredible. So sometimes storms can affect you where you live and affect you in ways that you would never expect. They can create damage and cause things to scatter. And in the same way, sometimes you hit seasons of life in your life, times of crisis, the storms of life. You're dealing with the loss of a loved one. You're dealing with health issues. You're dealing with bills that keep piling up. You're dealing with the effects of the pandemic. And so storms are always tough. The storms disrupt your life in ways that you would never expect. They can disturb your mind, body, spirit, and soul. You're not sure how long they're gonna last. You're not sure how hard they're going to hit. And sometimes it seems like just when you get out of one storm, here comes another storm on the horizon. After getting hit with storm after storm, if you're not careful, you can become discouraged. And if you're not careful, you can begin to lose enthusiasm for living. You can begin to lose hope. But the great news is, there is still hope. The great news is, regardless of what storm you face, God will help you to weather the storm. You don't have to let the storm sink you. You can rise above the storms of life. Not to sound cliche like Reverend Jackson says, but you, you just have to keep hope alive. You just have to keep on trusting. And instead of focusing on the storm, you have to keep your focus on the Lord. 
in the text, Jesus finishes teaching from a boat. In so many words, Jesus indicates to the disciples that he wants to cross the Sea of Galilee at night. To get to understand, to get to, from one side of the Sea of Galilee to the other side of Galilee was about eight miles. And ordinarily, it'd be no problem to get to the other side. It would be easier to get to the other side if it were during the morning with more visibility. And it would be no problem even to get through the storm and get to the other side if it was a mild storm. Because the disciples, we remember, were expert fishermen. But what made it difficult was that the disciples found themselves in the middle of a severe storm with poor visibility at night. And so when the storm, storm hit, the disciples thought they were done. They thought that they were going to perish in the storm, and they thought that they were experiencing the storm because they did something wrong. But the disciples found themselves in the storm, not because they were off course or because they did something wrong. They were in the storm because they were following God. They were in the storm because they were obedient to God's will and they were doing something right. But here it is. They're in the midst of the storm with all the waves and wind raging around them, worried and frustrated. And the disciples look over to Jesus and Jesus <sighs> is sleep. And, and the disciples are looking at Jesus like, hey, yo, yo, what, 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 <laughs> when you're in a crisis situation, all the formality stuff goes out the window. And so they were thinking, Lord, why aren't you worried about what's going on with us? We're about to drown, Lord, what's going on? And the disciples are worried, and they felt like Jesus should be worried too. And surely Jesus had plenty to worry about. Jesus could have been worried about the religious leaders. Jesus could have been worried about the crowd that he just talked to and making sure that they were all right in the storm. Jesus could have been worried about the disciples and himself in the storm. Jesus could have been worried about his own family members and the fact that they misunderstood him and thought that he was out of his mind. Jesus had plenty to worry about, but Jesus made a choice. And st instead, Jesus chose to remain calm in the midst of the storm. This is to say to you that in your life, the storms that you are encountering are not punishment. The Bible reminds us that it rains on the just and the unjust. So sometimes life just happens. But also, sometimes, whoever I'm speaking to, even though you find yourself in a storm, you have to know that you're doing something right. You are on the right path. You are in God's will, and God sees your obedience, God sees your faithfulness, and God will honor that. But just know, no matter what storm is raging around you, you are not by yourself. You don't have to worry, you don't have to be afraid, because Jesus is on the boat with you to weather the storm. And because Jesus is on the boat with you to weather the storm, you can keep your peace. The storm may be raging all around you, but you can choose to keep your peace. I don't know what I'm going to do next, but I'm choosing to keep my peace. I refuse to be intimidated by anything. I'm choosing to keep my peace. I'm choosing to keep my peace because I know the Lord is on the boat with me in the storm. If I hold my peace, the Lord will fight my battles and victory shall be mine. Regardless of what storm you find yourself in, know that God cares about you and God has compassion on you. The disciples thought that they were, since they felt like they were about to drown, that Jesus didn't care about them. But that's not true. Jesus loved them. He did care about them or he wouldn't have helped them at all. He would have let them just be on the boat by themselves. And so in your life in the same way, when you're in a storm, when thoughts try to tell you that God doesn't care, those are lies from the enemy. Don't listen to that. God loves you too much.
to leave you by yourself. When I see my children crying, or when I see my children in pain, I don't like it at all. I want to help them, and I want to keep them from being in pain. I want to keep them from hurting. And so I want to make sure that they're all right. Isaiah 49, 15 says, Can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she is born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. And so when you go through trouble and when you feel hurt, God fills it with you. But you have to know that regardless of the storm that you go through, God is in control. God has the power to speak to the storm. God can tell the winds and the waves to be quiet and obey. He can tell sickness to be quiet and obey. He can tell the trouble to be quiet and obey. God has not forgotten you. God loves you too much to leave you by yourself, and God loves you too much to leave you in the storm. In the time of crisis, you're learning much about yourself. Instead of moving away from God, you're learning how to draw closer to God. The storms are, that you are facing are helping you to strengthen your faith. Jesus didn't send the storm, but Jesus used the storm to teach the disciples and to strengthen their faith. He was using it to strengthen their faith. In the same way, God doesn't want to harm you or hurt you. But God will use the storms of life to strengthen your faith and to teach you how to lean on Him. And also, the storms will teach you and show you what you are made of. When that storm hit in many places, it made government officials to reevaluate some things. They said to themselves, you know what? This water is rising. We gotta figure out how to keep the Schuylkill River from rising. We have to figure out how to elevate some structures. We have to de de develop a plan of action for the next storm. And so in the same way, the storms of life will show you what you are made of. The storms of life will make you stronger and wiser. The storms of life will show you how to endure like a good soldier. The storms of life will force you to get into your word. The storms of life will make you pray more and bring you to your knees. And so the storms are strengthening your faith. And so when you encounter a storm moving forward, you'll have a plan of action. You'll be ready. You'll know what to do next time. But even in the midst of a storm, even though you don't like the storm, the storm is causing you to develop gratitude. Even in the midst of the storm, you have to learn how to praise God and be thankful for what you have. Eagles defensive tackle Fletcher Cox lives in South Jersey. When the storm came through the Philadelphia region, it wiped out some stuff. His house was damaged. But fortunately, at the time that he was supposed to be at home, he decided to go to the barber shop instead. Had he had been at home, it could have been a lot worse. In the same way, when the storms of life hit you, instead of focusing on what you don't have, you have to thank God for what you do have left. You have to be grateful that it didn't affect you. And you can say to somebody, you know what, I had some storms, but thank God I'm still alive. I had some storms, but I thank God that I had some family and friends. I had some storms, but I thank God I still got my joy. Thank God I still got my peace. Thank God I can still laugh and smile. You have to be grateful for the storm that didn't take you out. You have to thank God that you are still alive today, and you have to be grateful for what you still have. But ultimately, as you stay on the boat with Jesus, you're going to make it to the other side. If you notice from the beginning, 
Jesus told the disciples that they were going to make it to the other side. He didn't say we might make it to the other side. He didn't say it's a strong possibility that we make it to the other side. He didn't say maybe we make it to the other side. Jesus meant what he said. Jesus gave a promise. He said we will make it to the other side. To you, God doesn't do mites or maybes. Maybe you'll make it to, your, to the other side. God is not wishing that you make it to the other side. When God gives you a promise, God sticks to his promises. The promises of God to you are yes and amen. You will make it to the other side. You're coming out of turmoil. You're coming out of trouble. You're coming out of disappointment. You're coming out of depression. Instead, you're crossing over to joy. Instead, you're crossing over to peace. Instead, you're crossing over to abundance. Instead, you're crossing over to wholeness in all areas. Instead, you're crossing over to your calling and purpose. You have to continue to continue to stay in the boat and trust Jesus because you're going to make it to the other side. You're going to make it to the other side because the Lord loves you. You're going to make it to the other side because the Lord is with you. You're going to make it to the other side because other people need you. They need what you have. They need the gifts and graces that God has blessed you with. You will not be overcome by the storm. God is going to see you to the other side. God is going to help you to weather the storm. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for your strength. We thank you for your grace and mercy that brought us through. Let us continue to hold on to your unchanging hands. Let us continue to keep the faith. Let us remain strong in you. Lord, we just pray for peace throughout this land. We pray for peace in the city of Philadelphia. We pray for peace in all the cities of this nation. We pray for the nations of the world. We pray that people, instead of hating one another, they learn how to love one another. We need more Jesus in their lives. Because we know, Lord, that at when Jesus gets into their lives, they will turn completely around. They will never be the same. I ask, Lord, that you just continue to bless our children. Lord, send your angels of protection around them. Look over them. Watch over them. Help them to stay focused and stay on the right path. Help them to understand that regardless of wherever they go in life, they always need to seek you and put you first. And so, Lord, I ask that you bless our children on today. Lord, we praise you and we thank you. You are so magnificent. If we had a thousand tongues, we could not express how wonderful you are to us. And so, what we're going to do is we're going to continue to praise you. We're going to give you the sacrifice of praise. We're going to continue to worship you by the way that we live our lives. Let our light shine before others so that you may be glorified. Lord, we thank you and praise you. And we give you all honor and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, we would like to extend the invitation. 
even to those who may be watching. To receive Christ into your life. For those who call in the name of the Lord will be saved. If you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, don't delay, don't wait until tomorrow. Call on his name right now. The Lord has loved you with an everlasting love. You don't have to walk through this life filled with burdens and not knowing where your soul will rest in eternity. All of us, our souls will rest somewhere, someday, but we have to make the choice to receive Jesus into our lives. And so today, all you have to do is ask Jesus to be the Lord of your life. Ask Jesus to be your Lord and Savior and repent of your sins. And as you do that, Jesus will come into your heart. You will feel a love that you've never known before. And so today, if there's one who has made the decision to receive Jesus into their lives, blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise be to God. We know that heaven and the host of heaven is rejoicing and we rejoice with you as well. Praise the Lord. Welcome to the household of faith. If you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to reach out to us here via the Facebook Grace Room is the place to be. And we will answer any questions that you might have. God bless you. At this time, we want to remind you again of the offering. It's such a blessing to be able to give. And we know that God loves a cheerful giver. We appreciate your continued giving. And we know that God will continue to abundantly bless you for your giving. And so there are many ways that you can give. You can send your tithes and offerings to our physical address, 7101 North 20th Street, Philadelphia, PA, 19138. The church office, mail slot is available Tuesdays and Saturdays, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. You can use bill pay to Grace United Methodist Church, or you can use Cash App dollar sign, Grace the Place. And so these are the various ways that we can continue to stay connected and continue to give even during this time. And we know that as you continue to be a blessing to others, God will richly bless you. Amen.
bless you all. Thank you for joining us this morning. We look forward to seeing you this time, this space next week, virtually. And I pray that you have a blessed and wonderful week. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. God bless you all and go in peace.